Good afternoon my loves, welcome to Maverick Baking and welcome to another chocolate review. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kelly and here we conduct other chocolate review videos, we share easy little kind of recipe videos and we even undertake food challenges. So do stick around if that sounds like your kind of thing. Today folks, let's talk about lint. Hugely famous across Europe and known throughout other parts of the world as well, but are they known for being vegan. Let's find out. <laughs> Lint branding has long revolved around being this luxurious Swiss chocolate product. Supremely creamy, so much more than other brands, and that it is all about enjoying yourself, all about luxury. So it's interesting to see that they have created some vegan products that don't really seem to be continuing down that same marketing path. These are very predictably contained within different packaging to what we would normally see lint in. You might think, Kelly, why do you care? I just, I do, okay? Do you think I talk about chocolate on the internet for fun? Yes, actually. <laughs> Typically we see lint with a lot more of this kind of gold foil. We see very clean white and most importantly glossy looking card packaging. So it's both very predictable, but interesting they have decided to do as so many other brands do when they release a vegan product, they decide to just absolutely greenwash the shit out of it. <laughs> Instead, we have this very matte, very kind of Whole Foods, very Holland and Barrett cardboard packaging that doesn't pretend it's anything luxurious. So I'm very interested to see whether they've gone down the same route with the actual chocolate inside too. So from what I've seen, they have two of these plant-based bars they have released. They're Vegan Smooth and they're Vegan Hazelnut. And to swap out the kind of milkiness that is usually contained within lint milk chocolate, they have used oat drink. Apparently they can't call it oat milk, oat drink. And the product on the back as well, most likely for legal reasons, because there are legal determinations in the UK as to what you can and can't call milk white or dark chocolate. This is described on the back as cocoa product with oat drink powder and almond paste. And this one with some hazelnut pieces. Are they selling <laughs> very well with that description? Who knows? But let's find out if Lint can do vegan well. I think we're going to start off with the vegan smooth. It only makes sense to start off with the kind of plainer version. On the back they have their usual, you know, claiming that they have the finest cocoa, that everything is very carefully controlled from roasting to conching to finishing with perfection with the usual anonymous Swiss chocolatier on the background. And the main ingredients found in this bar are sugar, powdered oat milk, cocoa butter, almonds, then cocoa mass, an emulsifier, and some flavourings. The flavourings I'm very intrigued by, I don't really know what kind of flavourings they would need to add, most likely vanilla, perhaps something similarly almondy for using almond pastes. It's good to see they still have a decent amount of cocoa butter and nuts in there. Not good if you have a nut allergy, but good if you want some smoothness from your chocolate. But what does concern me is how far down the list of ingredients you actually find the chocolate part. Probably why this is called cocoa product instead of chocolate. Yummy. <laughs> so we open up to find the usual kind of lint foil contained in there. It has a beautiful, beautiful sound. And when we open up, we can see Lint's usual very thin 100 gram chocolate, but with slightly kind of different differentiation here with the size of the chunks. Usually these are very big in Lint bars and it has much more of a matte finish than most Lint milk chocolate bars do. The immediate smell is quite familiarly linty. It smells like they're, they're chocolate bunnies, they're chocolate reindeers. Not too much of a snap going on, though that is to be expected when there are almonds and other inclusions. But let's see if this is worth your money. It tastes and feels like absolutely nothing you would describe as luxurious. <laughs> the texture, it's absolutely dreadful. Dreadful. It is thick. It is pasty. It does not melt. If I was to leave this in my mouth for 24 hours, it would not melt. It's sticky. It's almost powdery, likely with the amount of additions they've had to add to create that kind of creamy milk chocolate texture. This is not creamy. This is not milky. It doesn't even taste nutty from the almonds, really. Supremely sweet. And with just the most vague and distant flavour of chocolate in there. It tastes like a cheap chocolate cupcakes frosting. 
it tastes like butter, sugar, and cocoa powder. That's all I can describe this as, as if someone has not effectively stirred or whipped their icing up enough. It is stiff, bland, and generally unenjoyable. If this was one of many components within a cake or in a dessert, it would be palatable. If you had something, you know, wet enough to actually make it digestible <laughs> alongside, or something with a richer chocolate flavor, and this was just something going on. But the thought of consuming even another square of something that is just straight up this is beyond unappealing. The flavor is not terrible, it's not unpleasant, but the texture is. It really, really is. Does it taste like a lint product? No. Whatever flavorings they added have made the smell lint-like, but the flavor is worse than the most generic milk chocolate you've ever had with a texture that makes it literally not even worth offering to other people to get rid of. Harsh, potentially, but for a company that value themselves on and, you know, thrust themselves into the, into the market of being luxury and being smooth and being creamy and having your man in a white hat on the back making out as if he's even tasted this is just completely unrelated to this. Completely unrelated to this. Yes, it's vegan, but it's not smooth. It does not taste good and it is absolutely not worth your money. This bar is a solid one out of five. Shall we move on to the flavoured version though? <laughs> so the other lint bar we have is the vegan hazelnut. Similarly, a cocoa product made with oat drink and almond paste. And we can expect 10% of this to be made up of hazelnut pieces. The ingredients list is otherwise exactly the same, aside from those kind of pieces of hazelnut. Let's see if these hazelnuts can, can do the work, all the hard work, and make these bars of chocolate anything resembling palatable. Opening up, we can see both on the front and the back that it is essentially identical, but for some small kind of chunky hazelnut pieces sticking out. I like that they're going to be detectable in the texture because sometimes they get a bit lost if not. Let's see if this one can redeem the entire brand. <laughs> to summarize briefly, <laughs> The hazelnuts help it, but they absolutely do not save it. <laughs> the texture is exactly the same in this bar. You still have that horrible, stiff pastiness to the texture, except you just have something else to chew through, which makes it slightly more exciting. There is some added hazelnut flavor to the chocolate, as well as the actual hazelnut pieces, from what I can detect, because the hazelnut flavor is quite strong. It's not unpleasant, it's just that it doesn't quite make up for how bad the rest of the bar is. The texture, is not good. The chocolate flavor is completely absent in this one because the hazelnuts completely override it. And I think the real criticism I would have with this is that it is not 2014 anymore. We are not lacking good vegan chocolate out there from vegan chocolate brands, from big chocolate brands, and also even from craft chocolate brands. Bars such as Vigo, for example, create an absolutely deliciously high standard for vegan milk and hazelnut chocolate, which is accessible and the texture and flavor is worlds better than this, in my opinion. If you were a vegan needing something to pick up from the supermarket and you love chocolate and hazelnut, this is palatable, but it is not good and it is absolutely not up to the standard of other lint milk chocolate bars, in my opinion. While it's slightly better than previous, I cannot give this one any more than a two out of five. Overall, I am disappointed. Lint have some good products. They have some bad products, but they do have some good products. And it's just a shame that not only have they arrived to the vegan chocolate market so late, but they have arrived underdressed and completely unprepared for the situation. There are so many other brands bigger and the same size and so much tinier than Lint that are doing vegan chocolate cheaper, and more importantly, better. So if it was up to me, I couldn't possibly recommend these to you guys, though do feel free to try it. And if you have tried it, let me know in the comments what you think of either of these bars. Am I just setting too high a standard for Lint or are they really better than this? Because this is one to forget. <laughs> but I'm afraid that is all I have time for today, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching as always. Do share your thoughts with me in the comments. I do always enjoy reading them. And until then, I'll see you for the next one.